Hey, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my studio. I want to teach you how to paint in acrylic and these videos are my free gift to you. I'll put the sides of the canvas up and I'll also get some colors running up the screen that I choose to use in this tutorial. Now this is going to be a beautiful, bright, sunny, mountain field sort of scene with a, lots of different facets you can add to a painting. Something that looks good in a workpiece that'll be hanging on your wall. So I'd like to bring you over here and just show you what I'm going to lay out onto the canvas. Okay, I've got pretty much on an angle my horizon line here, okay, and I've got a few things laid out here. I've got some mid-ground mountain ranges here, hills and mountains, and I've got the main mountain in the background just doubled up over there in the far ground, okay. I've got a sky. I'm going to have some sand and some rocks down here just to break up the grass and some pine trees here. Now I want to have a glaring sun so I want to show you how I get that glaring sun in my sky with a lot of glare and I'm going to have some clouds, I don't know if you can see but I'm going to have them fanning out like that so they look like they've got perspective and in my simple but easy sky to paint but it's going to look brilliant once it's done I want to have a bit of haze down on the bottom horizon line here. Now I will have a traceable for this that will be in the links in the description below under the traceable link. So first things first, I want to use my French Ultramarine for the, these, you get a realistic sky with this, you watch what I do. I've got a little bit of magenta there, I just call it magenta but it's quinacridone magenta. And our white, the white is what's going to mix, so we'll bring that there. Now what I want for the horizon line is a pale, French ultramarine. Just put a little bit in the white there, not too much. Now I want the slightest little bit of that magenta in there, not too much, okay? So what do we got there? About that much on the brush. And this is going to add warmth in that horizon. So you can see, there it is there, I'll get this dabbed in there. So like I said, I'm painting it in sections. Now you can paint your own style of this, but this can be detailed even more once it's finished, but I'm just going to do it to the standard I'm going to paint it today. So I want to get this blocked in there just like so. It's only a small footprint of area that I'm painting, but the actual painting is a decent A3 size. So I've got that there. Now what I want to do is just fan it up and blur it so it's not a hard line now. I'm blurring it. Okay. This is going to be the warm distance in the background behind our mountains. Get that up there, I'm fading it away. See what I've done, I've faded it away. And I'll bring the next color down to it so I can control the height of that warmth. Okay, I've just wiped the brush, got all that heavy paint out of it, and I'm grabbing some more French ultramarine blue mixed with white, just to get a pale blue to join up to that horizon area there. Now, I'm happy with that colour blue. You don't want your skies dark blue, you want them a bit lighter. Gives them that realistic vibe. Alright, now this is going to go to about that height from here. So what I'll do, I'll just get this pushed on. Bring it around my mountain there. And where it's joining up to that horizon colour, we'll call it the horizon colour. I've now got less on the tip of the brush and I'm going to merge those two together just like that, so it's a beautiful transition of the two colours. And once we put the mountain in front, it'll show the distinction of that warmth in your sky. You might not see it before you put your mountain there. Now I'm going to merge that as well, so I'm bringing this down a bit lower because I don't want that warmth that high. I just brought it that high so I can bring it down to the level that I want. Coming to the edge of this brush and just stroking it through. Now this is a decent quality paint. I've got no mediums in it, so if I can do this, you can do it, okay? And coming over to this side here, joining it up to that warm colour, merging it in, and now simply bringing it to the height we want up here. The French Ultramarine gives a nice realistic sky colour. There's so many colours that can do. Uh, I have a favourite with the Cerulean Blue, but I find French has got warmth in it as well. So I'm bringing that up there just so I can put a bit of a darker value right at the tippity top. So to get me darker value, I'm grabbing some more French and I'm going to mix into that 
I haven't washed the brush, don't need to. I need enough there, so that's how much volume I'll use. And now I'll simply, I could see a little bit here, the value I've got to darken up from. Okay, so I've deliberately left a little patch there on my palette so I can see. Just a little bit darker, grab some more of that. Now practice every procedure if you're new to art or if you're not too weary on how to do it. If you feel a bit weary how to do it, always practice. So what I'm going to do is start at the top, get the edges right in there, bring it to there, and then scrumble that into that other blue. See what I'm doing? The paint stayed wet a bit. Don't stop and have a cup of tea. Get this done first. Do an area, then stop. And I can probably put some striations down like that. And we've got a beautiful transition of those free values in our sky. Now this transition can be a bit wavy and wonky as well. It doesn't have to be a straight level line. And whichever way, everyone's different. So you might have a different way to merge colours the way I am showing you here. Process is in the journey of creating this art piece. There we go. You enjoy creating it and others enjoy just looking at it. Okay, there we go. Now before this dries too much, I want to get that glare in the sky, okay? We have a few bits here that might need touching up. I'm just analysing it. So this is why I'm doing this right now. It always pays to analyse your work. Simple, simple sky. Now I'm using a pouncer. I've just dampened that so it's not so dry. And I want to just simply use this. If you don't have pouncers, try and find some or you can find them online. Use your finger if you're careful enough, but a pounce is easy. And this is the best way to get a glare in the sky. So I want it to the here. I want to get it on, right? Look at that, even twisted a bit. And now what I want to do is simply ride this out. Ride it out, ride it out. Till you feel you can't ride it out anymore, then you might have to pick up a brush just to softly blend the edges and soften them edges. I've just added a little bit more paint because I didn't quite have enough on there. So I'm trying to clear this out now. I'm coming out and out and out. So now I'm going to pick up my blending brush because see all these spiral edges? You don't want that. So grabbing a kitchen cloth and my blending brush, I want to, I'm stamping, controlling what I'm blending. I'm not just, this is acrylic, it's not oil. Some oil artists, they might just do this willy nilly, but with my way, I control what I want to do. I'm bringing the brush this way, so if anything, I can drag bits lineal, left and right. And I've got to try and do this before my sky color dries. If you feel your sky color will dry, well then simply add retarder to your paint before you start to keep it wet longer. And I'm going to come along here and this is how you get that glare, a pretty realistic looking glare in your sky from the sun. Because on a beautiful sunny day when it's up high, you don't see the actual shape of the sun. There is a simple glare in your sky. Now before my sky dries too much, I'm grabbing a fan brush and this is my white paint out of the tube there. It's thicker than that other stuff I just used out of the bottle. And I'll get something here first. So let's just say something dancing across here. Now in doing this, I'm not putting too much paint from the brush onto the canvas. It's very light, okay? And I just want something coming to a point right there. That'll be our vanishing point there, let's say to speak. I'll grab a smaller blending brush and I wanna blend that. Blend it, tickle the tops and Blend the bottom down, so to speak. Bit of the top up there. Look at it, see how it cloud-like it's looking, and pull it. There we go. I could probably use my finger a bit as well. Okay, that'll do for that cloud. Now I want something here, maybe coming from my point, and then right up. So I'm leaving openness within this cloud. I'll give it a bit of a base, a bum. I always like to give my clouds a bum and see all the openness I've left in there. This will have some shadow and weather within it. There we go. I'll see if I can blend that, pull that in there. There we go, give it the bum. See, there's no retarder on here. Blend that out. And I wanna get some weather in these big overhead clouds here. These look like they're coming over your head. 
And I'm simply gonna add something over here as well, a nice big fluffy one. I'm trying to act quick because I could have, would have, should have put retarder in this because I'm filming and it's gonna take me longer to do, but I'll work with it. Now these clouds have got to look like they're in front of that glare because the clouds are closer to us than what the sun is. There we go, we got that one there. How's that looking in the monitor there? Um, maybe something here. I'm going to use my finger because it'll be a bit more abrupt the, the, because the paint is kind of dry. I'm having trouble. There we go. My finger's more forceful. I can control it. Now, where else do I want something? Maybe want something just here, lineal, and then coming out. I'll use my finger again. Because it's a rubber glove, it's acting like a an instrument a brush would do just getting the vibe of it there everything's still rubbery spongy and wettish so to speak now i just simply want to get some weather into those for me weather i'm grabbing the gray and some of that magenta not too much like this one here i want the base filtering up and bits of this Filtering up. Now, I'll try my blending brush, but I've got a funny feeling. Yeah, I'm going to use my finger still. I want to blur that into the cloud, leaving the grey, leaving the first colour white that I put there as well, the smeared white. But this is just adding bits of um, different values of shadow and weather within your cloud. There we go. Which other one can use a bit of that? I'm just looking, I want some of it under here. So it's gonna create the underneath of our clouds there. Over on this one, see how easy it is? When you know what to do, you can do it. You absolutely can. See, that's quite dry. I won't have much luck blending that with a brush, but my rubbery glove is gonna allow me to smear that colour in there because I've lost my window just to show the underneath of that cloud work out like some have got more some have got less this clouds obviously further away than that cloud up there now we'll just simply add the yumminess okay I've cleaned that brush and I want to grab this now and just add some of the white pull the white back and bring it back into that grey here and there, maybe a bit of a sunlit edge there. There we go. Maybe a bit there as well. Uh, make sure your finger's clean. And I'm just sitting the edge of that vibrant yumminess down, leaving it there, but just killing the edges and blurring it into that colour. A lot of regular viewers know what's happening here. It's turned the two-dimensional cloud into three dimensions. Find the, the light hitting this somewhere there in the middle a little bit and that's all we're doing now you just practice this on some different surfaces doing yumminess weather and all sorts of loveliness within clouds and then when you know what to do when you're doing a painting you know you're not going to be nervous and feel you're going to ruin your painting you know you can add bullshit to your art so there's me glary warmth cloudy sky we got our sun glare there we got a bit of warmth in the background now we can start bringing everything forward i've got one mountain i've got another one there and i've got some little ones here these little ones are over the hill on this field so i'm going to show you as i'm doing the trees what's over and what's on top that'll show you what's distant and what's close like these trees here so that white paint out of this bottle, it's a free flow, it's a Atelier. It's the same paint as that, but this one is softer. This one is thicker. So I just, I'm just choosing to use the softer one. And I've got my cobalt blue. Now I wanna mix up in here. I wanna tint this the color I want my distant mountains. And I'm gonna want just a light and a darker value. So I'll mix all this up here. I'm just testing it on the canvas there. Now this is simple as just getting it where we want. So I want to come up here, get the edge up the way I want it. OK, 
coming down, sweeping around. And you will see just how this is starting to push and show that warmth in the sky there. So I'll get this to that mountain. So we're blocking it into all our areas there. Instead of painting everything over each other, we're controlling where we're painting stuff. And this is a, another great way to do your art if you're not used to doing it this way. I'm not used to doing it this way, but I'm enjoying it, having a change and doing it this way. Stamp it on now, because the edge of this mountain doesn't have to be very sharp. It doesn't have to be a sharp line. And you can see how that warmth is showing up now within our mountain range, behind the mountain range, sorry. Now there's my line there. Like I said, the traceable for this will be in the traceable link below this video. So look at all the links below my video there. There's my Facebook link, my Patreon link, my um, traceable link, bloopers link, all sorts of links there. Just see what's in my cupboard. Okay. Now that can be dry, but I like to have it a bit rubbery, so like still a bit, little bit wet so I can scramble the colours together. So see how simple that mountain was. That colour, we want three versions of it, just three. This is the mid value. I want to go a higher, darker colour and a lower, brighter colour. So to make that easiness happen, I want to do the darker first. So I'm going to grab some more cerulean blue on my brush. And I'll just come over this side and just get a darker value of that. I'll wet my brush a little bit just so it's going to transfer. And you can see the difference, how the darker value is going to look. So I want just bits of dark. So I'll come to the very edge there where I want it. And I just want to scratch it just like this. I want to try and create that vibe. Just like that. Very simple to do. Uh, we'll get some here. So I'm going to kind of come down just like that. I'm just looking for, there we go. These bits here, it's up to you how you want to blend them in and brush them in. But we're going to put some lighter colour into this mountain as well. That's looking mountainy to me, I feel. On the edge where you need it on the edge. And just simply do this. Use what brush is going to work for you as well. I'm, I'm just finding this flat brush is doing okay for me. That's why I'm using it. Getting the right value is going to help. And then we'll just simply put the, the white snow on there. So for the snow on that mountain, I'm going to grab some of this mid-tone value that we mixed up to paint it in and just taint the white with that, okay? And then next to that, we can just see the difference in value, how it's brighter, a bit more. Don't want it too white, otherwise it'll look glary and something not quite right. Yeah, that's what you call looking like snotty, Ian. Yeah, you don't want it to look snotty, so we'll just make sure that doesn't happen. I'll start from this side and what I want is the actual edge white, snowy, like that. And then I want to sneak it in where I need it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just grab another flat brush just so I can scrumble those together just like that, see? I haven't dried from the last colour I put on, I've just left it. And with a bit of luck, we're going to get beautiful brushed on snow capped mountains coming down the edge there because it's rough, it doesn't have to be a straight edge. And then just pushing it through where you want it like that, grabbing your other bro dry brush and scrumbling it, softening it just to get rid of those iffity effity edges, so to speak. Don't do too much, because see how that didn't scrumble very well? I'll do a bit here, and then quickly scrumble. That's going to scrumble a little bit better. I did too much of a footprint. That's all right. I'll fix this bit here up, just because I want to. 
just showing you what you can do. Just remember, I am as human as you. I do not have superpowers to paint what I paint. It's just knowing what to do, the heart and desire to do it, you can do it. And moving over this side, you can see what I'm doing. I'm pretty much keeping the tops white. See how there's a little blue edge there? I want to get rid of that. And then just, I'll do that much and taper that down, softening the edges. I want to do this with the field as well so it doesn't have any hard lines anywhere. Now I just went, I didn't go willy nilly, I sort of know what pattern I'm looking for. You look at mountains, you look at snow, whatever, you get an idea how they lay. Now we just want to lighten up the base area here. So grabbing more of that mid-tone again, just so as we can get this glary. Watch what I do. I do a little bit and then quickly scramble it up. And you don't want to see the line. You want the paint to be washed, washed in. So I'm just going to go like this. Just wash it in so there's no hard line. Twisting it and then quickly blurring it because it's drying already. So this is mixing it or painting it dry a little bit at a time. Have fun and enjoy the process, okay? Now I'm going to add these other mountain in here. So I'm going to add a little bit of red to make it warmer, coming closer, bringing it darker. So I'll pick up my cobalt blue over here, get a little bit of white into it to get it the value that I want and pick up some of that magenta and warm it up a bit. So I'm getting a darker, different looking blue than what I just had these colours over there on the mountain beforehand. So now, simple again, we're going to sweep. I'll come away from the edge and then I'll come to it. Now I didn't dry it. I could have, would have, should have dried it so as it's not going to mud up. Now I'm, I'm dabbing it because see those little lumpy, they could look like distant little foresty trees all the way in that mountain there. That's looking a bit blue. I want it more red. So I'm going to grab a lot more red and put into that. Quickly stamp this on and get that the same vibe. Okay, now I'll dry that to a rubbery degree, meaning it's not 100% dry because I want to leave room to maybe merge some other colour through it if I need to. I'm grabbing a smaller flat brush, grabbing some white, and I want to get the lighter value of that colour now. So I'm just gingerly pulling it through there wet my brush. So we could probably start from the bottom and I'm just going to do this, watch. It's still rubbery and wet, it's a bit closer, it can be more detail -y. I'll get a nice bit up here. Probably something up there. See that hard line? I'm just softening it down now with my brush so it doesn't look so cartoony. Now that colour we had, just simply grab a lot more of the magenta and we want a nice dark colour of that now. There we go, that's visually a lot darker. I haven't dried anything. Now we've got Little one up here, get it in front there. Where are we? Ground level, the ground's on a sweeping plane. It's not jagged and sharp, okay? And we'll just simply block this in. I 
I'll sweep this down. I'll, I'll show you the top bit. So there, sweep it down to a point. Boom. This here. To where it's going to meet. And simply block that in. I'm just going to add the slightest white to some of that colour just to get a hint of some bright light hitting those closer ones there. The mountains are still wet. I just want to kind of get something scooting down here. I'll look in my monitor and just see how that's looking. It's wet, I haven't dried none of this, so I'm going to do that. Pull it this way. Just pull that that way. Now I'm going to put a couple of little distant trees here but but they're behind the land mass here so as you'll see my line i'm simply going to grab some mask and tape just so you'll see where my field is going to end up somewhere about here for those trees because it's going to come up in you know like that so to speak that's where my field's going to be. But I'm just putting some trees here. So I don't want all their colour underneath the field grass when I paint them, hindering that. That's why I put that tape there. Now I've got the darkest green I can get, which is perylene green. This here, it looks black. I've pulled a little bit of viridian green in it. That's what I'm using to get my darker value there. And over here, I simply want some pine trees. So let's try and get... We'll get a, I'll, I'm going to mark where I want the tops of them first, about there, and then slowly coming down. And they're going to stop about here somewhere. Okay, I'll get rid of that dirty bit there. And I'm just getting the different heights. There we go. Now I can simply paint them in. All right, this is how easy it is when you don't know how to do these trees. And I'm going to use this brush to hopefully get some kind of shadowy what would you call it, evergreen shape. So there we go, it's a little detailed flat. Now this is the only way I feel I can do these in a acrylic. You see the oil artists do things their way. If you're painting in oils and want to do it that way, follow that way, but if you're painting in acrylics, it could react differently, okay? So be aware of what you're watching and what you're doing. And then over here, they could start looking a bit more because that's a long way away now, just like that. I'll dry that and simply highlight it gingerly. Now I do have a, another detailed brush. I'm picking up some of the Viridian Green and I might just put the slightest bit of white in that just to grey it a bit. I'll try a little bit of red. There we go. And I want to try and just get just some light hitting these just on one side because the sun's over there to the right. I'll come in front of that little one at the background there. But that's it. And I'll, when I stop, I'll have a look in my monitor just to see how I'm faring. I think I just turned the brightness up. When I paint dark colours I've got to remember to turn my brightness up. Some kind of shrub as well, I don't know. Filter it back so it's not a hard line down the join. Can we watch you pull your tape off from those trees Ian? Yeah we'll get that tape off now. Okay. Now it's important the bottom here you got no open bits it's solid because it's over the hill remember now for the foreground i want to block it in with an earthy color i've just found myself some raw sienna use you don't have to have raw sienna anything that's an earthy color you can use and i want to just use this 
Uh, we'll put that there. I find it's thicker than the Atelier. Now I'm going to just gradually mix it into that puddle of water there until it's the consistency I want. Now this is going to be green, but I just want to block it in so I've got some earthy colours underneath. Now as you do this, try not to get build up a chunks like that. This is a dry canvas, nothing on it, so I'm stroking it left and right, putting some pride in my work there. And we want to come just sweeping. Let's get it so I don't get a ridge of paint there. Sweeping right in front of there. And that masking tape line that I used, I can see it. I'll get that up there first. Cutting it right in, there we go. Don't be too botanic about this. I mean, be botanic enough to get it on there nicely, but... Now, see how we got dark colour here? You wouldn't want that showing through your actual grass paint. So that's why I put the tape there. And this colour here that I'm putting on, when it's dry, it'll help camouflage that showing through. It won't let it show through my grass paint, hopefully. So I'm going to dry this now. I've dried that. Now, before I put my grass on, I wanted a bit of a, a dirt, rocky patch here. So I'm going to put that in so as I can bring my grass over it. And just using this raw sienna that I've got here, I'm going to add some white into that just to lighten it up. Okay, wet my brush. You don't want to go too far up. So what I want to do, I want to be about here, about that far up, but bring it out. So let's see, I've got the camera in the way. I wish I just didn't have a camera there, but it's fine. Hence the awkward lookingness of brush strokes. I want something way out here. Oh, don't flick up in. This is just going to add a beautiful sense of extra value to your painting because it's not just boring. There we go. Now I want to get it a bit, there we go, like so. And I'm going to grab a little bit of darkness in that now. So to make that happen, I'll simply pinch a bit of, just a little bit, burn umber. A little bit of burn umber. Just the paint's still wet. So this is going to be, let me just see how dark it is. On the edge, top edge, like that. And if you kill too much of the light a bit, just simply grab the lighter colour and add it back. See what I'm doing there? I've just added some darker values within that. What I'll do is I'll add the lighter colour back over the dark, so I'll get this where I want it. Now for this field of green, I'll keep it simple. And I've got sap green there and cad yellow medium. I want the medium because I want it to be warm. I don't want it to be cool green. And what are we? We want it... So what, I can, what I'm going to do is mix the medium value of the green that I want and then I can add the la dark and lighter values to finish it off. Stroke this in like so. I'm getting that top edge done. Pushing that mountains back over the horizon there. Come across using your brush and doing some infinity eight strokes, crisscrossing it. This is the best way to do field fields with grass. And any earthy colour that's showing through, it'll make sense to having dirt under there, not the white canvas. That's why I painted that there. When I come to this dirt patch that I put here, I want to kind of tooth it and fork it to it, okay? So what I'm going to do now is first get this side finished both sides just so as I can start making the ground look like it's dipping in the middle. Carefully and you don't flick up into those trees and turn them into snot. Yeah I should be using my bullshit stick but I'll get by there we go I'm relaxing up there pushing it. I'm going to deliberately leave little bits of that under colour that raw sienna colour showing through just to give the sense of dirt. And where are we? I want to get this to that dark bit of paint there. There we go. And kind of 
come up. Do the other side. Now in doing this, you, you might have to, depending, get this and bleed it back, backwards and forwards with everything so it's got the perfect marriage, you're happy with everything, okay? Grabbing my same brush, I'm grabbing a lot more of that dark colour with uh, burnt umber just to, like I said, backwards and forwards, that little bit of sandy patch in the front, and it's missing darkness, and if the darks aren't there, the highlights aren't gonna work. So, I wanna start again. I'll simply get the darker bits, bleed it into that lawn. So we've got darkness under there, bit up there, bit in there, bit here. And if I've lost too much of me lighter dirt colour, I can simply put that back as well. But there we go. So I've given that a bit of a dry and I just want to oh, come on the tape and work our way into it. Slivers and leaving the dark of it at the edge. There we go. And then this is looking more better. That's it. Now back to this sap green we had here with the yellow. I'm just going to pick up most, the majority of the sap green just to get some darker bits here and there. A bit of water, enough water just so it's going to come off your brush with ease. Yeah, you want it coming off your brush with ease, eh? Absolutely. All right. Now we don't want to overdo this, so I want to kind of come... That's darker. I want to come from here. And I just want bands scalloping up like that here and there. Just get a bit of darkness coming through there. There we go. Another one here. This is bringing, slowly bringing the um, lawn into our dirt there. Now, we're just... Some thicker areas, some not so, some not so thick. And then our highlights will sink this back. See, I'm kind of bringing it down in the middle. There's a bit of a valley there. Now we've got that middle colour, we're going to grab a lot more of the cadmium yellow light and start bleeding into that colour. We're getting it more of a yellow green, a very strong yellow green compared to what was up there. And now we're going to introduce a bit of white as well, just to mint it up a bit. And before I do, I'm going to sharpen the flat brush. I want to get this bit here, like watch, where's the dark bit? There's a bit of dark green. I want to come like this, leaving the darks there and just scalloping over some of that stamping it, tracing it into there I want a lot of this glaring here so I'm going to get it and start glaring up this field lightly touching it because all those darks are going to allow these brightnesses to work now and then I'll pull it from there I'm going to have some trees here don't forget and this get some over here banning through this is the main vibe color of this field not all this dark green we needed that to make these stand out Going to have some simple stones and rocks everywhere. Don't have it too solid this colour. You want it open and airy. Just like so. Let me look at my monitor. And anywhere, like let's say that bit there, 
that's too much. I'll grab that other colour and put over it just to sink it back. Okay. Now I do want a bit more, let's say, white into that, just so as I can get this hitting with the sunlight down there. Now I'm going to make do with the rest of this raw sienna, so I'm going to grab that. I just did a test run there off camera to make sure it's going to work. And that viridian green, I want to mix up my darker green base for me, foreground pine trees. I want one about, where are we, a bit, a bit close to there, one about there and something about here, okay? Let's say about up to there. So I'll draw a line and another one that can come a little bit shorter maybe. And this one can be down here somewhere. Now make sure that this is the darker value that you want. Uh, I'm gonna try and do like this, coming thicker. Just block in the actual dark mass of it first. This one looks more earthy colour, this one, but not to worry. A shadow happening there. I'm just going to do this. That'll act like some shadow. Okay, grabbing uh, that paint and the cadmium yellow. We'll get a bit of that over here mixed up and some white it's like a dirty highlighted color of that now the camera's on an angle so it might look a bit distorted at first but i'll pull the camera around and this is going to be now now i'm coming to the top of each pull out there with this highlight just so as the darkness and the highlights on the left side because the sun's over there, I suppose. So for those detail police that like to know where the shadows are, we got it in the right spot. Getting that there. I've just pulled the littlest of white just to do something like that. Come on. I'm just grabbing the burn umber and a little bit of black just to do finish it off with some beautiful simple rocks and where you want a rock I want something here so the rock where it's on the ground I'm going to draw it on the ground like that and then come around a bit because this is quite close to us and then start painting in a rock so to make it look like it's not a cardboard flat cut out because it's closer to us the base of the rock needs to be arched and round kind of thing not flat otherwise the perspective won't look right and I don't know let's put something maybe this one can sort of be on the lay of the land there like that some kind of stone another one there and probably I don't know can we put something here maybe something there For the rocks, I'm going to use this small round. Now, I want to, I'm just going to grab some of this colour here, the, the white, the raw sienna that I've got available here. Probably a bit of that burn umber. Now, when you're highlighting a rock, do it on the darker side first and then gradually bring it a bit brighter because if it's too bright, it looks cartoony. Rub a lot off your brush and just find your your rock shape with this highlighted colour. Something like so. Bit out here. Get it in the shadow there. And simply just add more white to that mix 
a lot more brighter and then less, less, far less than what you just put on there. Got rid of too much again. <laughs> and just here and there, highlight the darn thing. Bit on that rock there. You're just highlighting it just a little bit here and there. Okay. Okay, I'll just sign this and take off the mask and tape for a reveal and whack a frame on it and see how she looks. And I want to thank my YouTube members and patrons for supporting my content. Much appreciated. All right, let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got a mountain simplistic field scene that a beginner can achieve in acrylic. So with a bit of practice, I know you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. If you did, you tell your friends, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also check out this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.